All right, everyone, and welcome back to our second lecture here, part two. Um, in our discussion here about blood pressure regulation during dynamic exercise, last time we discussed about the bare reflex response during physical activity, and we said that as exercise intensity increases, so does blood pressure. Right? We're going to see this increase in blood pressure as we go from light to moderate to vigorous physical activity. And so this reliance on the vasculature to change mean arterial pressure um, becomes a little bit more evident during the higher intensities. Right, And today we're going to talk about what happens at VO2 maximum. Right, So at maximal exercise, blood pressure regulation can present a challenge to the cardiovascular system. And the reason for this is to start off with defining VO2 maximum again. Um, and so when VO2 is at its max, all the variables of the Fick equation are at its maximum. So that means cardiac output is at its max and AVO2 difference is at its max. So we think about that and compare that to mean arterial pressure. Well, you know, we're trying to deliver as much blood as possible to this working skeletal muscle. So the cardiac output of, is, of course, going to be at its maximum. And we're trying to extract as much of that oxygen from the blood as possible, right? So not only an active skeletal muscle, an active cardiac muscle tissue is extracting a lot of oxygen from the red blood cells, but also inactive skeletal, uh, sorry, inactive organs of the body are also increasing their oxygen extraction because they're receiving less cardiac output during physical activity. So they also need to increase their oxygen extraction. But if we want to have further increases in our mean arterial pressure um, when cardiac output is at its max, that means that we are going to need to rely on changes in the vasculature, right? That TPR in order to regulate mean arterial pressure. And that's sort of what we saw last time, right? With the um, cardiac and the vasculature barrier reflex that even though both of them shift upward as exercise intensity increases, the reliance becomes more dependent on the vasculature to regulate mean arterial pressure and blood pressure, right? Because cardiac output, it's delivering all the blood it's producing is being delivered to that skeletal muscle and is not going to be able to greatly contribute in, in higher intensities towards that regulation in blood pressure, right? So how is BP regulated at max exercise? And what's the importance of the sympathetic vasoconstriction of inactive regions compared to active skeletal muscle? And what does this mean for functional sympatholosis, right? Because when we exercise, that, you know, the bear receptors are picking up on, you know, pressure differences. The chemoreceptors are picking up on the, um, you know, O2, CO2 metabolite levels within our body. Temperature is regulating as well. And these things can all impact blood pressure. But for the most part, what we're going to see is an increase in sympathetic nervous activity during exercise. So as we go on a run, on a jog, swim, bike, whatever it may be, we're going to see increases in blood pressure with increases in intensity of exercise. And that means that there's going to be a high level of vasoconstriction going on. But the skeletal muscle, for the most part, during physical activity avoids most of that vasoconstriction. And we discussed uh, three theories why muscle blood flow increases, but uh, the Metabolic control theory and functional sympatholosis are basically going to serve to almost override that sympathetic nervous signaling, right? So we're going to get more conductance, more vascular conductance to the skeletal muscle during exercise, during physical activity. But again, we're concerned about blood pressure. Mean arterial pressure is the primary regulated variable of the cardiovascular system. And so as we increase exercise, how are we, once we reach that maximum limit, how are we able to regulate blood pressure? And so, you know, if we're at max already, and let's say, you know, 
maximal cardiac output is 30 liters and the mean arterial pressure during this period is 100. How are we going to regulate BP during exercise? So let's look first at a region of the body that we tend to vasoconstrict. And so the kidneys being one, the splenic circulation. So they receive a large majority of blood flow at rest, you know, for the kidneys, roughly around, you know, a fifth or 20% of our cardiac output with splenic 25%. And so if we look to the right here in this graph, the kidneys, you know, at max exercise are going to receive about 1% of cardiac output, right, which is around 300 milliliters per minute. Um, we take the renal vascular uh, conductance um, by, you know, taking that mean arterial pressure, and that gives us a renal vascular conductance of 3 milliliters per minute per mmHg. And so when we look at the total vascular conductance, right, how much blood is going through the whole circulation, we take the renal, right, which is relatively low during this max exercise period. We take the muscle vascular conductance, which is very high. It's receiving most of the blood flow. And then the other areas of the body, which we have blood passing through, right? So how, how would pressure be impacted if instead of having 1% of cardiac output by the kidney, we take it down to zero, meaning that we vasoconstrict, 100% vasoconstriction to the renal circulation. Those arterioles are closed shut, um, not going to deliver any blood, right? And so if we do the math, if we did that, if we took uh, the renal blood flow down to zero, how it impacts mean arterial pressure is that we go from 100 to 101. So we only increase mean arterial pressure by 1 mmHg. And as you guys know, well, not only is that not that much difference in blood pressure, but also that's 100% vasoconstriction to the renal circulation. That blood is not going to be passed through. It's not going to deliver any oxygen. It's not going to be able to pick up any waste, drop off any nutrients that are needed. So it's not good for the cells, nor does it really serve at max exercise you know, it doesn't benefit us that much to bring 100% vasoconstriction to a region of the body, right? So instead, what happens when we increase that, once we get to that max intensity, right? How are we going to have an increase in mean arterial pressure? So let's look at the skeletal muscle. And the skeletal muscle receives around 85% of the cardiac output during max exercise, right? So it's receiving you know, a large majority of the total cardiac output, right? And so, again, we do the math with the muscle vascular conductance. We get 255 milliliters per minute per mmHg. But let's say we vasoconstricted that at maximum, right? And we took that from 15, uh, sorry, um, we took 15% muscle vasoconstriction, right? So just minimal, we're taking it down by 15%. And so by doing that, when you work the math, right, and you look at mean arterial pressure, you get an increase in 15 mmHg. So at that max point, if we're trying to increase pressure, and again, pressure will increase with increased intensities, well, if we 100% cut off the blood flow to the renal circulation, it's not going to surface that much. And so what happens is during that max intensity, we can start to see vasoconstriction to active skeletal muscle, right? In order to preserve mean arterial pressure. But that's an issue because if we vasoconstrict to the active skeletal muscle, what's going to happen? It receives less blood flow. It receives less oxygen. And therefore, it's not going to be able to keep up with the metabolic demand of the current activity going on. And so, again, this is... This is sort of, we're reaching a threshold. We're reaching a limit of the body, right? Everything is working on overdrive. And the body is desperately trying to keep up this pressure regulation, this blood pressure regulation, and oxygen demand and the oxygen delivery to the skeletal muscles. And so given that choice, what does the body choose instead of 100% vasoconstricting the inactive regions? Well, it chooses mean arterial pressure, right? It almost says, right, and I'm making a little bit of a hyperbole, the body says that it doesn't really care about the current 
physical activity, the current exercise going on. It doesn't matter that you're working at your 100% effort, right? Because if you continue to keep that intensity up and blood pressure regulation isn't met, it's going to need to vasoconstrict that active skeletal muscle, right? So the body's constantly monitoring this blood pressure regulation and the oxygen delivery, right? The metabolic demands that are currently going on. And as exercise intensity increases, both of these things increase, right? So with oxygen delivery, we get vasodilation to the active skeletal muscle. Uh, those metabolic, so sorry, those metabolites are going to be vasoactive and cause some vasodilation to the local circulation of the muscle vasculature. And it's also going to block some of that adrenergic that sympathetic nervous activity signaling. And so those arterioles are gonna stay dilated to deliver more blood, therefore more oxygen. But that opposes the vasoconstriction needed to increase blood pressure. But since that for most of the intensity scale that we're able to vasoconstrict other regions of the body, we're able to have a balance. We're able to vasodilate to the skeletal muscle and we're able to regulate blood pressure by vasoconstricting to more compliant regions, right? The renal circulation, the splanchnic circulation, and that in the increase in cardiac output will help you know, increase at the same time blood pressure and that flow of oxygen. But then once we hit that max point, the body has basically, you know, it cardiac output's gonna be at its maximum, so if we need to then regulate mean arterial pressure, we're going to need to see a difference in the vasculature. And so since most other regions of the body at this point, most of the inactive regions are almost completely vasoconstricted, the body has no other choice but then to start vasoconstricting active skeletal muscle. And so what does that mean as far as performance is concerned? That's why the VO2 max comes to an end, right? You can work at 100% intensity for a very, very, very limited time, right? After a while with increasing inclines and increasing speeds, you're going to, you know, jump your feet off to those rails. Those, that test is going to end because your body's, it's not able to keep up with that high intensity, that maximal intensity for so long. Because again, it's, it's balancing between the regulation of blood pressure and the maximum amount of oxygen that it can deliver. And so just to summarize these past two lectures, the gain, or I should really, it should say this here, let me note this, it should say maximum gain, right? The maximal gain, that center point of the barrel reflex is unaltered during exercise. So as that curve shifts up and to the right, that maximal gain, that sensitivity, that's gonna stay the same. However, the operating point you know, for each the cardiac response and the vasculature response does reset and it does get towards the left portion of the curve, a little bit left of that center point, which helps support the increase in sympathetic nervous activity. So as we increase that sympathetic nervous activity, we'll increase cardiac output and we're going to increase TPR by increasing vasoconstriction, both will help to increase blood pressure during exercise, right? But we need to prevent the mismatch between cardiac output and TPR by vasoconstricting active skeletal muscle to maintain during um, severe dynamic exercise. So again, when we're maxed out during exercise, that cardiac output's at its limit, and we have already vasoconstricted the other regions, the body will actually vasoconstrict active skeletal muscle. Again, only happens during maximal activity, right? This is a severe, you know, severe stimulus given to the body, and that's ultimately what happens, but it does that to protect mean arterial pressure. And so all exercise is going to require a balance between vasoconstriction for blood pressure regulation and vasodilation to support the increased metabolic demands of contracting muscle, right? So we're, we're trying to keep up blood pressure by vasoconstricting to certain regions, but also trying to vasodilate to the active skeletal muscle so we could keep up the intensity of exercise so more motor units can be supplied with oxygen uh, so they can work at higher intensities and we could keep up that physical activity. 
All right, so that concludes the discussion on blood pressure regulation during exercise. Um, so what I will do is go back and we'll cover some of the other topics. We'll talk about the changes in VO2 during physical activity. We'll talk about the blood flow to skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, um, and inactive regions. So keep out for those lectures. All right, thank you guys very much.